Hi, it's Dr. Lippy Roy. Happy Friday. Welcome to my show, Health, Humor, and Harmony. Today, I'm going to talk about two very different topics. Uh, this week is Oral Head and Neck Cancer Awareness Week. Today, April 15th, is also World Art Day. Lots of fascinating things to talk about. So let's start with oral head and neck cancer, which according to the National Cancer Institute, accounts for 6% of all cancer diagnoses, or about 110,000 people in the United States, where a new head and neck cancer diagnosis is made every 10 minutes, and a person dies from this disease every 45 minutes. Worldwide, over 550,000 new cases of oral head and neck cancer are diagnosed each year. So what exactly is oral head and neck cancer? It's a group of cancers that usually begins in the squamous, line, squamous cells lining the inside of the nasal, oral cavities, nasal and oral cavities, sinuses, larynx, pharynx, and salivary glands. Together, they are often referred to as squamous cell carcinomas of the head and neck. So who gets it and why? Men are affected almost twice as often as women. Tobacco and alcohol are the leading causes of oral head and neck cancer. 85% of cases are attributed to, to tobacco. In fact, cigarette smoking increases your risk by 15 times compared to a non-smoker. Human papillomavirus, or HPV, is also associated with certain oral head and neck cancers. Other risk factors include poor oral hygiene, radiation exposure, and Epstein-Barr virus, or EBV virus infection. So what are the symptoms of this group of cancers? They can include difficulty swallowing, a non-healing lesion or sore on the tongue, throat pain, hoarseness, a painless lump in the neck, coughing up blood or hemoptysis, and ear pain. So how can we prevent oral head and neck cancers? Thankfully, most cases are preventable by making some lifestyle modifications. If you smoke, get help in quitting. Avoid tobacco products in general and limit alcohol consumption. Reduce your exposure uh, to HPV. The CDC recommends the HPV vaccine starting at age 11 or as early as age nine until age 26. Some adults age 27 to 45 may benefit from the HPV vaccine after talking to their doctor about their specific uh, risk factors. Minimizing UV light exposure from the sun can also reduce your risk of getting lip cancers. Treatment for head and neck cancers uh, depend on the type and stage of the cancer. Surgery and radiation therapy are the most common treatment modalities designed to stop the spread of cancer by killing or removing cancerous cells. Chemotherapy may also be added for certain advanced cancers. A multidisciplinary team is involved in caring for people with oral head and neck cancers, including ENT or oral otolaryngology surgeons, medical and radiation oncologists, dentists, speech therapists, and nutritionists. Now I'd like to switch gears. Today, as I mentioned, April 15th was proclaimed as World Art Day by UNESCO in 2019. But this international celebration of the fine arts and creativity worldwide was first recognized in 2012. And how did they pick April 15th? Well, it just so happens to be the birthday of renowned Italian painter, sculptor, and engineer, Leonardo da Vinci. So you might be thinking, well, what do painting and drawing and other art forms have to do with health? Well, it turns out that art has the power to heal. Spanish painting prodigy Pablo Picasso once said, art washes from the soul the dust of everyday life. Harvard Health Studies have shown that people who express themselves through artistic activities like drawing or painting are less depressed and less anxious. Art also helps with dementia, uh, helps people with dementia reconnect with the world and has improved, art has improved uh, memory, 
reasoning, and resilience in healthy older uh, people. Another benefit of art is that it encourages creative thinking and problem solving in children and adults. Since there's really no right or wrong in art, we need to imagine our own solution. This type of flexi flexible cognitive power stimulates your brain and prepares it for more complicated functions similar to learning a new language. Art therapy is one of the most Effect, uh, effective and evidence-based means of therapy when dealing with the most vulnerable groups, such as people living in war zones or in refugee camps. Art therapy using painting, for instance, can help refugee children understand and discuss feelings that they may find distressing and may have difficulty processing. And unlike a typical art class, Art therapy doesn't rely on specific skills or aesthetics, but instead focuses on the creative process and the way that art can convey things that words cannot. Art therapy is about communication that bypasses words. It can also be an excellent way to teach self-awareness, mindfulness, increase socialization, and promote a range of other physical benefits and overall well-being. Well, that's all for today, but not before the joke of the day, art theme. When should you fix a painting? When it's Baroque. <laughs> all right, tune in Monday, three o'clock Eastern, when I'll be discussing Parkinson's disease. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Instagram at healthhumorharmonydrroy. Be well. I'll see you soon.